Hi there, my name is Roman and it's my great pleasure to welcome you on our booth at Embedded World. You have a really big booth this year, right? Yeah, of course. We are trying to bring it uh, richer and nicer every year to bring the latest technologies uh, of ST and of our partners. Let's check it out what we have there. You have lots of cool stuff going on. Uh, let's go in through here. Uh, sorry. sorry. So, hello. Hello. Hi. So, who are you? Okay, uh, so uh, I'm a um, uh, ST enthusiast and maker, and uh, I have created this project here that is a Apple One replica software emulator that runs inside a discovery board by ST. And I created this to show the potential of this uh, uh, development board because uh, I wanted a real hardware system emulated via software inside a normal embedded system board. So, uh, as you can see here, there are several hardware components that are interfaced to the STM32 uh, discovery board. And uh, uh, this is a common uh, Macintosh classic keyboard from 1983. What is the screen? The screen is uh, the demo that Steve Wozniak wrote to show uh, Steve Jobs the potential of this computer because uh, in those ages it was impossible to um, use a computer without a, with a monitor and uh, and he thought that uh, this would have been a, a, a real home computer for real people. And what so, is this? This is a new system that uh, I am developing and I will launch on Kickstarter in this year and it's a new idea of embedded system this is a STM32469 chip by ST, and uh, uh, it's a big brother of the chip inside. The you put the real board. games there? No, the real games can be plugged in the expansion bus with a normal homemade product uh, board like this. The homemade is on Kickstarter? Uh, it's be? It will be everything. The whole thing? Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, all games can just work? Yeah, yeah. In this case, there is a special emulator of the Sega SG-1000 uh, early console by Sega in 1983. And this game is Space Invaders that is fully emulated. And uh, if you see, it's possible to play. And there's also the audio generated in real time. So ST is perfect for emulation? Yeah, so uh, you know the benefit of STM32 products, they are really GP products uh, that can host and manage uh, many different applications, including the emulations of these uh, legacy, beautiful games and platforms. So here at the show, you're launching some, uh, some new solutions, right? Absolutely, so of course, we give a space to our makers and fans, uh, but always we use Embedded World as, uh, as the main show where we try to bring uh, new products and new solutions for our customers. And one of the biggest uh, launch of this year for us is uh, STM32MP1, which uh, yeah. is extending our STM32 family to microprocessor uh, domain. Yeah. So we are coming to Linux operating systems with STM32MP1. And you see we have a great demos uh, already yeah. demonstrating the product in the live uh, applications. So this and is, uh, what is MP1? MP1 is a, is a, is a product, uh, it's basically like STM32 and rich uh, with uh, A7 cores, uh, being able to run Linux, uh, you know, in typical microprocessor application. But the beauty of this product is uh, that it keeps and retain all the peripheries, ecosystem and support from regular STM32s. So it's a ARM Cortex M4 together with the A7? Yeah, you have dual A7 plus Cortex M4 inside. So the M4 can be used for real-time applications, while the A7 will be used to run Linux on Android. So and we can demonstrate this here. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Roman. So who are you? I'm Gerald Baiza. I'm the MP1 software architect. So. Um, this is the MP1 right here? Yes, exactly. So, this is a demonstration with our evaluation board. In this uh, example, you can see that on the right we have a motor. This motor is fully controlled by the Cortex M4. So, the Cortex M4 is dedicated to real time activities. Whereas on the left, on the screen, 
Yeah. You have a, a user interface yeah. that is controlled by the Cortex A7 and the, the graphi graphical processing unit. So you have two different OS running at the same time? Exactly. We have a cube-based firmware on the right on Cortex M4 for the motor control, and on the left we have Linux running on the Cortex Which A7. kind of Linux? This is a, a fully standard Linux. Uh, ST started several years ago to develop the Linux drivers, uh, having in mind to, to port them after on the MP1. And now we are fully ready because today we, on, we announced the product last uh, week yeah. and we already have 80% of our drivers that are upstream to Linux.org. So, um, can you stand right here? So, the, the, what's the considerations? Uh, it's a, is it kind of like a big new uh, move for ST in the Linux world? or? Yes, of course. Uh, our intention was to extend the existing MCU uh, family, the, the very well-known STM32 MCU family, with a step above. So it's a higher performance yes, MCU? Yes, on graphical side, and uh, also with all connectivity that can be bred by uh, Linux. And there's a lot of other uh, MP1 demos, right, around? Yeah, can move around? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, you see, we, don't, we, we won't have only this, uh, this demo. Yeah, we have some additional ones uh, where we demonstrate uh, again the, the strength points of this architecture. Here we demonstrate uh, the power of the 3D GPU unit inside. Uh, or another demo is the AI engine running on the Cortex M. So there's a 3D going on here. Is there a GPU? Yes, of course. Everything here is done by the GPU. Which so is uh, which one? Uh, is this it? is a, a Vivante GPU. Vivante GPU. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, on these little boards right here. Board. Okay, so you have a camera. And, and it's GPU. putting it into the 3D. The GPU is uh, putting the, the yeah. image on the cube faces. Nice. Yeah, we have another demonstration. So, what is this? Also aims to, to show what we can do with the Cortex M4. <coughs> this time, the Cortex M4 is not really used for real-time aspect, but it is used, it is used uh, this time for uh, razor low power activities. And in that in that case, you can see that we have here our discovery package. This is the smaller version of our evaluation board. It is running Linux, like on the other side. And on the Cortex M4 side, this time we put two connectivity stacks, Bluetooth one and the LoRa one. And if you a linear board, you can see the Bluetooth is available. You have the, 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 the system Avenger, and, uh, and you have the Avenger uh, uh, source. If you want to see. And the equivalent on the right is the right connectivity. So the Cortex M4 can gather the information and send them packets to the Cortex A7 to display them on the screen. And uh, it's very power efficient uh, architecture. Some things only go when it needs to go on a bigger core. Yes, exactly. Because you can imagine to completely power off the display when there is uh, nothing to, to show. And uh, during this period, the Cortex M4 can continue to gather the information. And uh, is, it, uh, is it a smooth process to develop for this platform? Yes, maybe we can move around. So what is this? So uh, yeah, I can come back there. So this is the main page of our uh, ST wiki. So the address is wiki.st.com. Yeah. Uh, we put a lot of effort here to, to put many documentation that will help our customer to move from the existing MCU to our MPU. And the other thing. The one node STM32 CubeMX tool was enriched with new feature in order to easily uh, be able to allocate our peripheral whether to the Cortex A7 for Linux or to the Cortex M4 for STM32 Cube. Nice. So, is this a platform new, new launch or how? Yes, it's absolutely in launch. So it's been launched uh, just last week. Uh, but uh, basically, we did the launch in a way that uh, we are right now in the mass uh, production. So customers can, can get the sample starting from can March. Get a real ones. Exactly. And the discovery kits uh, will be available uh, from our distributors from April. But around here, you already have a lot of partners working on this. Absolutely, because it's not only about the product, right? Uh, what is important for us is that our customers have very easy and quick uh, development uh, time. And to do so, we need a rich set of ecosystem partners, both on hardware and software part. So here yeah. together, we have in total 20 of such a partners. Yeah and we can uh, check some of them yeah. uh, right now. Let's do. All right. Yeah. 
So let's go in there. Yeah, cool. So, Let me check this one. Hi. Hi. Hello. So who are you? Uh, I'm Simon. I'm from Contron. Um, what is Contron doing? Contron, uh, we, we're making uh, customer um, electronics and customer demand. Um, we, we usually don't have own products, but uh, with uh, the STMP1, yeah. um, we started our... What is this? Yeah, this is... Uh, this is our first uh, MP1 sum in the size of a stem. You do a sum in the size of a what? Of a stem. Just a stamp? Just a stamp, yeah. A little it's, tiny stamp. Yeah, it's uh, that size. Oh, a big stamp. It's one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one, it's, it's uh, not that big, it's very small. It's one by one inch. Whoa. So it's a little module you put on, uh, what, did, what yeah. board you put it on? Yeah, what we is have this? All, on it, all you need. We have a DRAM, we have a NAND flash, we have a SPI no flash, and we also have an Ethernet file. Uh, so you, you can only connect um, through, uh, your voltage yeah. and the Ethernet plug and the web server is ready. And what is this demo here? Yeah, well, we, we try to demonstrate um, the benefits of the uh, MP1. Um, the MP1 has uh, a dual Cortex A7 inside. Uh, which is doing all the communication uh, and the Linux. So we have um, uh, this is connected over Wi Fi to uh, this demo. Yeah. Uh, and what, what you see is that we, we have this connectivity of Linux, but also the Cortex M4 core inside is doing all the real time stuff to, uh, to um, control the LEDs. because. You can't really do real time with Linux, uh, and for that purpose, you can use the M4 to do motor control and all. Yeah, it's, easy to one the other. Yeah, it's really easy. You, you, uh, in this case, we have some kind of shared memory where the Linux and the Cortex uh, M4 can access at the same time. So we can we can put the image into the shared memory and just read it out by the M4. So it's really easy. Oh, and how soon is available this this solution? Uh, it says so, pre-order. Yeah, well, we will have uh, the next songs available in, um, in April. This April. Yeah, we already we are already building some new. Uh, is there a price? <laughs> I will come. I, I don't know exactly, but I think it will be up about uh, thirty-five dollars or below. Nice. Very cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. So. You see, Contron is one of the, the yeah. partners, but we have many others uh, all around. Uh, yeah. uh, there are partners linked also to the software. Cute. Like, yeah. Uh, do some yeah. optimization. Uh, this thing. solution right here. So that, I mean, you can try it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and get ready to, to work with the MP1. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have some other uh, partners. Uh, yeah. And solutions. Uh, so we have seen the system on module, but very yeah. interesting solution for customer it could be also a SIP, where yeah. uh, you can integrate everything into one chip. And this is something what we have here with Octavo Systems. Hi. So who are you? Hi, I'm Greg Sheridan. I'm with Octavo Systems, and we're doing a system and package around the new MP1. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking the MP1 processor, the power management IC, DDR passives and EEPROM and all the other components that would typically go around the system and integrating it into a single BGA package that's only 18 millimeters on a side. So everything's in there? Everything's in here. So basically that means you don't have to worry about DDR routing, you don't have to worry about power sequencing, anything like that. You just hook up power and um, your EMMC and you're off and running with the, the new MP1 system. So basically making it as easy as possible for people to develop with the MP1 uh, allowing them to easily make cheap, low-cost, four-layer boards, simplifying the supply chain, everything like that. Really, our goal is to make adopting the new MP1 look just like a microcontroller. Is this, uh, is this your invention, this kind of thing? Uh, so, System and Package has been around for a very long time. What we're really doing is we're bringing it to the masses. So, it's really been um, just used for people like Apple or military applications and stuff like that. And what we're doing is we're bringing this technology to innovative companies, allowing anybody to take advantage of it. Apple, like the Apple Watch, uses this kind of technology. But, uh, you know, again, we're bringing it and making it mass market available. And what does it say here? Um so this is basically what we've integrated inside, right? So you've got your MP1 processor, the PMIC, one gigabyte of DDR memory, EEPROM, oscillator, all the passive components. And then what's really cool 
is... Uh, oh, can I go just one oh, step back? Yep. So this is uh, also yeah. showing the... Yeah, this is all the integration. So here's your DDR, the processor, the uh, power management, sorry. Yeah. Power management, all the passives, a couple of oscillators as well. So, so everything all integrated. So how long time does it take you before it's ready? Uh, so we will have samples in Q3 and in production in Q4. And the price will be good? We think so. The price should be competitive with a uh, doing it a, doing a discrete solution yourself. And what's going to be the products that are going to be using this? Um, anything that can use the MP1. Really, we're expecting it to be uh, very uh, really work for any application. Really size constrained applications are uh, are really key. Are people coming up from the microcontroller space? And is, so it's the most compact way of using it. I mean, we believe so. Uh, we're 18 millimeters by 18 millimeters, so we're typically going to be about 50 to 60 percent smaller than a discrete solution today. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank no you. No problem. All right. Thank Thanks you guys. a lot. Good job. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Looks Thank cool. you. So let's move on a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, one of other partner is uh, Shiratek. Yeah. Yeah. He's just finishing. Yeah. He's just finishing a call. Yeah. Probably calling a customer. It's all right. No worries. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No problem. So Shiratech is. Uh, can you introduce? Yes, uh, of course. So Shiratech is uh, here together with us uh, since the beginning. Uh, they are the important element of our ecosystem, uh, following the 96 uh, boards platform. Okay. So you just Hi. just start with the 96 boards you have right here. So which one is this? Okay. So we have here a 96 boards uh, IoT edition extended, the big one. Yeah. We have here the IoT, the 96 volt IoT edition extender. What's the chipset on this? The chipset is the new STM 32MP157 MCU from uh, ST. Uh, we also have uh, this model for QuickTel, the BG96 for a narrowband narrow IoT model. So you have narrowband IoT together with the MP1 here? Yes, exactly. And this is already, it looks like it's ready. It work? It's it, finished? It's ready, it's working, it's finished. Soon it will be uh, available uh, on Aero website. And for how much? Um, not know. I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. And, and what is this? Okay, and this is our new IoT cube. Actually, what we did is we, we took this new uh, motherboard uh, that you just saw a minute ago, and we designed another uh, mezzanine, 96 board mezzanine that fits on top of it, okay? So and you have the 96 boards in there? We have the 96 boards in there, and we have a mezzanine also. And on the mezzanine, we have a few uh, sensors, like gas sensors, microphone. We've also added the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And we have some terminal blocks for connecting uh, general purpose uh, IOs and another connector for uh, connecting, uh, actually giving uh, the option to connect to I2C, SPI, UART, so you can connect any sensor to if you want. This unit is actually an IoT gateway. It's a basic IoT gateway with a nice chipset, the new chipset from ST, and it allows you to connect any sensor you want uh, to this unit and uh, send its data to the cloud. IoT gateway. Yeah. So you call it the box cube? And the IoT box cube, it's an IoT gateway based on the new STM32 MP157 MCU from ST, along with the Quicktel BG96 from, uh, for a narrowband IoT communication with a mezzanine that uh, allows you the ability to connect to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth with a couple of more sensors and the terminal block for connecting uh, any sensor you like and send its data to the cloud. How soon also available? Also very soon. Uh, it's uh, in the final uh, stages uh, of design. Cool, all right. Thanks Thank you, Thanks. bye. Perfect. Very good. So, of course, uh, together ha with the hardware, yeah. we have also some uh, firmware and software-related partners. Uh, yeah. TimeSys is one of them. Okay. So they are on the Linux embedded uh, side of the development, yeah. combining and bringing the system together with things like security and embedded Linux in general. But I let uh, Atul to tell you. Hi. So who are you? Hi. I'm Atul Bansal from TimeSys, and what we are showing here is the security so solution here. for. Yeah. Security solution for embedded Linux. Uh, one of the problems we have in the industry right now is what is known as vulnerabilities. And there are coming at the rate of 350 vulnerabilities a week. And we have built a vulnerability scanner that scans the embedded Linux and it can actually find out the vulnerability specific to your your application, your embedded Linux. So it's running on this? 
it's 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 scanning this. It's scanning against this. Which it, with the MP1 it there. Is the MP1. Yeah. So this is the MP1. MP1 BSP and it is scanning the MP1 BSP and it's finding out all the vulnerabilities and then it's finding out in this thing where the patches are, what the configs are, and it allows the filtration of the of the CVEs based on the CVSS score, based on the kernel, and provide the patches. So that's one of the things we are showing. The second thing we are showing is a concept of a board farm cloud, on-premise board farm cloud. This is helpful for remote debugging, helpful for uh, doing the test automation. For example, this board, we can control from anywhere. Anywhere in the world, we can be there and we can control this board by, like I can show you, I can just power off the board, and now the board is off. Yeah. I can go and turn on the board, and you'll see the board is booting here, and it's connected. It's somewhere in the cloud, it's connected, and we can access the board, basically. Wow, that's cool, all right. So this helps with the remote debugging and test automation. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank cool. you, Atul. So you see, uh, you know, in a short way, this is where we really come with the MP1, a new product line uh, to our customers. Uh, yeah. It's the first step. We want to grow this family more further, same like we did with, with STM32 in past. Yeah. So stay tuned for future products and solutions. Yeah. But now I would suggest let's look also on the other um, things we are showcasing yeah. at Embedded World. All right, let's check it out. One of them is uh, the solution linked to AI. So you call it the STM32Cube.ai. Yes, this is uh, new. It's pretty new, yes. It has been announced recently at CES, uh, a show in the beginning of January. And here we are showing it in live action uh, together with our colleagues. Hi, hello. Hello. So who are you? Uh, Danilo Pau, ST Microelectronics. So um, you are able to do the AI on the microcontroller? Yes, uh, through STM32Cube.ai, that is uh, uh, the tool uh, uh, it's a nice software extension of uh, CubeMX uh, and allows uh, to automatically convert any pre-trained neural network into optimized code that can run on any STM32 Cortex-M uh, microcontroller. Any? Any, M4, M7, uh, even the latest M33. So what is, which one is running here? Uh, for example, this is image classification. It's a mobile net on 18 classes running on STM32H7 at 400 megahertz. Uh, so it's just algorithms, or how do you make it possible to do AI on just any STM32? Uh, because usually the customers use popular uh, deep learning tools, yeah. uh, such as Keras, TensorFlow, Cafe, yeah. and so on. And after that, uh, they export uh, the results of the training, uh, the neural network with the topology and weights, uh, and then the tool does uh, the conversion in optimized code. But, uh, so, these uh, Cortex-M devices don't have a hardware acceleration of AI, right? But these are standard microcontrollers. So, but, so they don't do all the AI on, only on the Cortex-M? So it go, happens somewhere else? Uh, uh, well, the training happen on cloud, on powerful GPU, but then uh, the inference, the deployment happens on standard STM32 microcontrollers. How much can you do in a small STM32? I can go down to a few kilobytes, I can demonstrate neural networks even on STM32 F3 with uh, 12 kilobytes and few of RAM and few kilobytes of flash. And you can do some inference, some AI neural network, something like that? Yes, absolutely, I can demonstrate. Uh, what, what can you show over here, around here? What is this one? This? Uh, yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. So, so what are you showing here? So we are showing here, uh, we are working with a partner on uh, Cartesian. It's a startup in the south of France. And they have developed uh, Nano Edge AI, which is a technology that is allowed to do the learning of a normal set of uh, motor and, and to detect anomalies from it. And the so it will connect, uh, it will start the learning phase when it's connected uh, just to display the result uh, to the tablet here. So you can do AI is starting the learning. So on just this little on one here? Little, on this sensor type. Not, well, for not this. Not this. On this. this. On this. This is a motor control kit. This one is controlling the motor or rotation. And here, you have the learning process. It's based on vibration. 
yeah. vibration analysis. And here, your system has been learned, and you see that it's detecting not any anomalies. Yeah. And then any kind of small anomalies will be detected. Uh, this kind of anomalies will be detected. Or a typical use case is also uh, unbalanced. Yeah. And you see, it's going to start flying. Uh, yeah, yes, it's detected uh, unbalanced. Nice. That's nice. So, so okay. you managed to, to put the AI on all your small microcontrollers somehow. Well, yes, of course, depends on the on the neural network model, uh, how much performance you need. But this is exactly the, the one of the benefits of the QBMX AI, helping you to understand what can run on which microcontroller. Okay. Yeah. So if we move on, yeah. I'd like to uh, also present you one of our latest, uh, tech, very interesting technologies. And uh, I'm very happy if Steven will give a short word about the 60 gigahertz uh, RF communication technology. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Steven. So, so what is what is shown here? So what we show here is this very, very tiny chip here. It's two, yeah. mi two millimeter by two millimeter, meant for short range transmission of a very high data rate is at it a very low is it on here? Yeah, that's the same demo here and there, not the same form factor, just. Yeah, yeah so the idea is that uh, basically we have in this box the Schrodinger's cat filmed by a camera sent to this nuclear board over a single UART link to this receiving board there, but through wireless, a wireless link. So we just cut the wire and replaced it by our wireless solution in minutes and it just works. Not a single line of code to, to update, not a software stack to grow or anything, just out of the box, almost zero latency in a matter of picoseconds and you get a 27 meg UART link here running between two MCUs, enabling very fast data transmission for a very How cheap. fast? Uh, here it's 27 megs, but this chip is able to do up to 6 gigabit per second. 6? Yes, yeah, 6 gigabit per second. So, of course, not suited for MCU applications, this 6 gig. But our low data rate goes up to 100 megs, which is not so low. All right, and uh, what's the distance that can be done? It can be, uh, well, it depends on the antenna, but with those nice horn antennas, it can go up to 10 centimeters. So, meant for short range, but not so short either, depending on the application you're targeting. And the application could be? Yeah, imagine that you have a sealed box like that. You can fetch data out of a sealed box with quite nice uh, distance. You can uh, go uh, on, and fetch data out of it and go in case establish it's point to point, no pairing, no, and no interference. You can have thousands of it in an industrial environment because there is no crosstalk and no interference between systems. Nice. So, uh, so you are um, um, one of the first ones to come with this kind of solution? Absolutely. So this is a unique solution today on the market and I think it will open a very nice use cases. Uh, because today, if you want to have a, let's say RF communication, you can have an NFC, you can have another protocols, but you will never reach such a speed like, uh, like with this one. 